Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Identity Project. This time, I think it's the fourth time or fifth time, something like that, uh, bringing some some clients on, some past clients. I guess we we worked together uh, for about a year. Was that right? Ish, or was it less? Six months. Started six a year months. Ago right now. Yeah. A year ago. That's right. So we worked together for six months, and. Uh, and that was about a year ago. So um, anyways, with that whole extended long intro there of, of stuttering and not making sense, uh, welcome to the show, my friends and past clients, Miss Dara and Eric. What is going on? Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. How's the weather over there where y'all are at right now? Is it, uh, is it as beautiful as it is over here? Yes. 50 miles away, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, as, <laughs> yeah. just as nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, typically when I interview people on the podcast, I feel like they're like never in Texas. And so I feel like that's always the icebreaker question of like, you know, we're, we're lucky here in Texas, especially for all my friends up there in the North. Um, they basically, every time I ever complain of being cold, they just tell me to shut up. <laughs> yeah. He's, since he's from the North, he knows how that all that is. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, well, cool. So basically let's do this. I want to dive into kind of Obviously, y'all are both on the podcast here for those of you that are just listening and not watching. Um, but uh, Dara, let's start with you. And I just kind of give us like the 10,000 foot view of just kind of your background uh, and what you do. Um, and then we'll have Eric do the same. And then we'll kind of dive into our journey of working together. So do you want background like health wise or career wise or both? Just give me like the the five minute version of who is Dara. <laughs> um, so I always grew up as the super skinny kid. Um, didn't realize until uh, I was an adult, and really in the last couple of years, how much um, medical things had to had a hand in that. Um, allergies, asthma, what I was eating, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, metabolism and heart rate, and so I was always really skinny. Um, and then in college, you know, you gain the freshman 15 or 20, whatever it is. And that was me. And um, then when I decided I wanted to be a police officer um, is when I really got into more uh, weightlifting. Um, I had started working out uh, probably about a year before that, because honestly, it helped me battle some depression I was going through when I was working um, in social work. And so I got through that. And then I started lifting weights and getting stronger. Um, became a police officer, and now it's really one of my biggest duties is to stay fit and healthy so that I can be of the utmost service to the people that I serve and anybody I come in contact with. So um, Eric and I, Eric actually helped me start tracking my macros when we first met, um, but it was a lot more of the, you know, eat candy and fruit for your carbs if you wanted to because you could and meet your numbers. Um, and so then, you know, we've meal prepped yeah, ever since we've known each other. And then we really wanted to dial it in. And that's where um, we started with you. And I found you through the Compete Everyday group. And um, it's been life changing. It's been a whole different last year for us. So. That's awesome. I love that. We'll dive into uh, a few different points on, on your story here in a sec. But Eric, let's, uh, let's get the five minute intro of you, brother. <laughs> Well, I am uh, I'm the gentleman from up north. I'm originally uh, from South Dakota. Um, Got to get that O in there. But uh, Darren and I are very similar in our stories. Um, I have a nine-year background experience in law enforcement. Um, I was uh, in law enforcement up in South Dakota. Um, but I was kind of on the backward side of, of where Darren's story was, where back in 2011, I was actually extremely overweight. Um, I was clinically obese. And um, I, I, when I heard that, that's kind of when like the light bulb came on and I got the kick in the butt and I'm like, I've got to change my life. Um, and so that's when I really kind of found my, uh, my health and fitness, um, you know, getting to the gym working. And I actually uh, hired a nutritionist um, while I was up north because I wanted to do a bodybuilding show. And that was really a goal of mine was to, to be 30 years old and, and have abs and <laughs> Um, you know, my first working with nutritionist, it, it was a game changer. And so um, taking what I learned from him, um, I was able to implement that into my everyday life. And then when Erin and I met, I was able to, to take that knowledge and transfer it over to her to mm -hmm. help her um, become what she has. And 
Um, I made the transition down here um, to Texas just a little under two years ago. It'll be uh, two years officially in like about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we got settled into our new house and, you know, we're really looking forward to setting some goals. And, and that's when Dara said she had found you on the, uh, the Compete Every Day group. And shout out to Jake for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, working with you, it was, oh my gosh, I mean, Working with a nutritionist before, I had an idea of what to expect, but we got so much more because it wasn't just nutrition coaching. It was habit-based coaching. It was accountability. It was basically like life coaching yeah. with an emphasis on what we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, yeah, as Dara said, it was, it's been a, a life changer this last year and even this last six months since working with you. I mean things have just been so much different, but so much better for us. Yeah. And we didn't rebound either, you know, like after finishing working with you, it's not like we were like, okay, well that was fun back to what we yeah. were doing. <laughs> so that's important. Yeah. That speaks a lot to how you coached us and, and that it's something that, that we've adopted that yeah. we've, you know, really made our lifestyle. Yeah. Well, first off, thank you. I, uh, you know, I always, I always joke with other coaches in the space and it's like, you know, I, I, as much as I want to take credit, like I just can't, I, I, it's almost like I feel guilty ever taking credit for any client's success because, you know, as I've told y'all so many times, it's like, look, I can tell anybody what to do, yeah. but like most people don't do it, you know? And it's like, it's, it's all about like trying to navigate through and like find what works for people. And I mean, to be honest, like y'all made the, the process uh, very easy on my end because you know, obviously you had some background, you know, this wasn't your first rodeo, but you know, for me as a coach, it was just like, Hey, how can I dive into, you know, a, a couple that already has a phenomenal foundation and how do we start to improve, um, and, and, and add value, right? Because everybody can get better, right? Like I can get better. We all can get better. Um, and so I think that's the cool part about coaching. <laughs> uh, what did you say there? We're glad we could challenge you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I mean, you know, uh, as, as non-sexy it is, like, you know, I always talk about like the, the five big rocks or whatever, where it's like, you know, sleep and hydration and food quality and food quantity and, and exercise. Like, those are like the big rocks, if you will. But like, that's not sexy to talk about. That's not some new fancy diet. Um, but, you know, I think that was like a really good foundation. So for y'all, it was more about, you know, when I use the example of like that mason, the mason jar, with the five big rocks in it, then the small little pebbles, and then the sand. Well, y'all had those five big rocks established well, right? And we got to kind of start getting into the pebbles and into the sand and like, you know, just like that's that's fun, right? Like you get to nerd out a little bit and kind of dive into some more stuff. So um, that was my long-winded um, answer to, you know, thank you and like congrats on y'all's success because here we are a year later, right? And like, like you said, nothing, change nothing fell off like still improving still setting new goals still challenging yourself like this is forever like this is the rest of your life it's not uh not 30 days <laughs> yeah. that's awesome so uh one thing i you know as y'all were introducing yourself and i don't even know if i've ever even asked you this before but one thing popped into my head i was I was thinking, so when y'all first met and like knowing Eric that, you know, you were already doing macros and all of that, like, like Dara, this was just something that was really cool and exciting for you. And you're like, oh, I want to learn that. Or was it more of like, I mean, how did that whole process go together? Cause I'm just like, I'm envisioning like couples and like, you know, they first start dating and they're going out to eat all the time and like all that, like that type of environment versus maybe y'all's environment. Was it, was that different or? Well, ours was much different because we were long distance. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Through a group that we used to be a part of that was um, about fitness and law enforcement. And so we met each other on there and a lot of people talked about tracking macros and stuff. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Every time I eat, I just try to eat right. You know, whether it's uh, lean cuisines or uh, eating lower fat beef or, you know, whatever it is, uh, make sure it's organic, you know, all this stuff, um, whole grains and stuff. And um, so then when I heard everybody talking about tracking macros and how it really helped them dial things in, I was really interested. And since he and I had gotten to know each other, he offered to help me 
Um, and so, you know, we talked about it and he kind of set my numbers and I would send him progress pictures. So he kind of started as my original coach. Um, but like I said, it was both when we were less educated about quality of food and all mm -hmm. of that, but, but it really did help me dial in a lot. It helped me lose a lot of weight. Um, I say a lot, it was a lot for me. Um, and so it interests me and I'm a very numbers oriented person and a very structure oriented person. And so it really helped me stay, you know, if I have boundaries and structure, then I do really well. I thrive. And so that's what that did for me. Um, I've had to get away a little bit from it because I was getting a little neurotic about it, but, um, but at least I have the self-awareness of that. So it interests me. He told me that that's how he got as shredded as he did. So I was like, of course I want to do that. Um, and so it just kind of went from there. <laughs> That's awesome. So what were, I'm just curious and, you know, for the listeners out there, like, you know, if you're, if you're tracking macros or this like whole, like if it fits your macros, obviously there's a huge emphasis on, on one side of the equation of like food quantity, right? You know, making sure that you're tracking, stay consistent with whatever those prescribed macronutrients were being fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So um, I'm curious, what did you love most about starting with that? Like starting with learning macros and tracking macros, like what was like the, 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 the few things that you liked the most about it? And then what was maybe a few things that, uh, you, I guess, since then have learned that maybe you have to consider? Um, I think for me, like the initial was the idea of eating the foods that you enjoy, but still seeing the progress. And I think that's the big catch with uh, flexible dieting, IIFYM, whatever you want to call it. That's what gets people. Um, and I was huge on the fact leading up to uh, competition prep in like proving this fact to people that, hey, you can eat what you want and you can get ripped up. And so I was eating Pop-Tarts after every workout, um, I think up to less than six weeks from my competition day, just because at that point it didn't really, the carbohydrates were too high that I, it'd leave me with nothing for the rest of the day. But like, I was obsessed with Pop-Tarts. My license plate in South Dakota was Pop-Tart. Uh, <laughs> no joke. Not even lying. Uh, the greatest thing ever. But, that was our thing. We have so many pictures of and, eating Pop-Tarts afterwards. And, and that's really kind of what branded me for a longest time within um, you know, this group and even social media at the time was the fact that, you know, this guy is the Pop-Tart guy, uh -huh. you know. Hashtag body by Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Uh. Um, <laughs> you know, and so it, that was really kind of the, the huge catch is, hey, you know, you can eat all this stuff and, uh, and still achieve your goals. Yeah. And so not knowing that it wasn't, well, knowing, we knew that it wasn't the best quality, but not knowing that that's not the best for you and how eating better quality stuff is going to make you feel better. That's what was appealing to us because I'm a candy girl. I eat sour gummy anything, you know, all day, every day for the rest of my life. So that was initially what's appealing. Yeah. You know, and I think over time it's truly evolved that you, you learn that, you know, I can eat that stuff here and there and get away with it. But if I want to continue to see a higher quality of progress, you have to make those higher quality choices. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I look back at it and go, man, if, if I would have maybe have done a little bit differently leading into prep, um, you know, at the time it might not have been as sustainable for me, um, but would I have come in and, and done better? You know, oh yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and even coming out of it, I'm sure it would have been better, but, um, you know, for the time, for where I was at mentally um, and just educationally coming into it, it was, it was perfect for me. Yeah. And so from that, I've always been kind of jealous of him because he can basically eyeball food and know that it basically fits within where he's supposed to be. And I don't feel like I can. I feel, I used to feel like if I went outside of that, then I would gain weight or I would get acne or, you know, whatever the case was. So I was kind of jealous of that. But then um, I've noticed I am numbers and structure oriented, which is sometimes to a fault. So I realized to give myself a break that I don't have to put everything into my fitness pal. Um, and that, you know, I know what I'm supposed to eat. I know I'm supposed to eat this many eggs and a banana or whatever the case may be. And so to not be so, I call it erotic, about weighing out my banana and cutting off the end if it's, you know, <laughs> 10 grams too many or whatever it is. And so since I've done that, it's been 
I, I've come to much more peace um, with eating and my progress and I've done just fine and I'm gaining muscle and I feel great. So it's, it, it was kind of to a fault on my end that I got a little too obsessed with the, the numbers aspect. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think it's, I, you hear about it a lot, right? And, and that's the thing, right? It, I always ask clients, especially when we start working together, I'm like, look, like, what have you tried? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Right? Because I think that that tells a lot about kind of their, their diet history, if you will, and, and what they've been influenced by. Um, you know, it's no different than where you grew up and the parents you had and the school system. You're, I mean, it's like we're, we're influenced by that environment. So, um, you know, I, the, the thing that I think that y'all had the most awareness in was food quantity, right? And like you had the awareness of, hey, like these are my macros. This is how I lose body fat. This is how I gain muscle, you know, et cetera. Um, you know, but as we like to do, like we like to, you know, try to, uh, I don't know what the word is, but if, if I was doing it for your macros, like I would have done the same thing. <laughs> like I would have, uh, you know, what's funny. I've never actually done. And I think that this is why I have like the perspective of it. And it's probably just from working with so many clients, but I've never actually done a, a specific diet for an extended period of time mm -hmm. because I always just looked at them and I was just like, like I was never the person, like I just hate putting myself like in a box. Like I hate like, like I love like individualization. Like I like to do things on different days and change things and just like do what I want to do basically, <laughs> I guess is what it is. Um, but I do love it for that reason that it creates awareness from food quantity. So were you feeling, you know, I know there is some, uh, you know, we talk about biofeedback with some of the listeners on there and you know, this is sleep, digestive, all those types of things. Um, so what were some of like the biofeedback issues that maybe you're experiencing with, focusing more on food quantity and not so much the food quality? Well, you know, we didn't learn them really until we started working with you. Mine was, um, as you know, digestion was huge. Um, probably sleep and recovery, you know, like soreness and that, um, because we didn't take rest days. Like we hated taking rest days. Still do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's much easier and much more enjoyable now, um, pretty much since you made us take at least a rest day a week. Um, <laughs> so, you know, pro for me, definitely um, uh, digestion, sleep, and recovery or soreness um, were mine. And then skin issues. Like, I know that wasn't necessarily one of the biometrics you worked with, but it would be. Since we. Since we worked with you, um, my eczema went away. Um, I went to the dentist. I used to have a recurring like abscess or something um, in my top gums behind my teeth. And it would come like every six to eight weeks randomly. It would just show up and then go away. And my dentist couldn't figure out there was no infection. There was no leaking or anything like that. So I talked to him today about it because I just went to get my teeth cleaned. And he said it might have been because a sinus issue cleared up. I haven't had that issue since we started working with you. Like, you know, a couple months into working with you once my body started um, reaping the benefits of, of the quality of food. So all kinds of skin issues for me and then huge digestion and it, improvements. It's just been, it's been life changing. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's well, I mean, it's just it's it's just so mind blowing to me, the power of nutrition. I mean, you know, Socrates, Einstein, whoever was like, may nutrition be thy medicine. And this was, you know, hundreds of years ago. Like, it's just mind blowing to me. And, and this is honestly hearing stories like this is like what made me want to pursue a degree in nutrition, because here I was, you know, seeing two sides of the equation, you know, seeing conventional medicine and then seeing more of this like uh, preventative, integrative, functional approach. And I, I was seeing what food was doing in people's lives and, and really not just food, but kind of all the lifestyle habit components as well. Um, and it's, it's powerful. I mean, it really can, you know, change your life. And I know that's kind of a um, a foo-foo statement sometimes you'll you'll hear it a lot from people they're like oh this is life-changing or whatever but like no like for real like this could literally change your life um, so identifying it and you might have to remind and jog my memory here a little bit um, but you know there that's some big changes from a digestive standpoint some big changes from the skin uh, what were the foods that you feel were contributing to those issues 
I think the biggest foods that were contributing to those issues were the processed foods, the foods that we were buying uh, prepackaged. Um, and the lower quality meats. Yeah, I mean, and, and definitely, and I think that goes with processed food is just the quality of the food that we were getting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were very big on doing cereal uh, for our pre or post workout. You know, we try to keep our uh, those meals low in fat, higher in carbs, and we do it with a protein drink and mixed in to, to simulate the milk. And, um, you know, that was, that was kind of our jam at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, working with you and, and learning just about that food quality and, you know, um, making those smarter choices when it comes to um, eating, eating something fresh as opposed to the yeah. prepackaged. I mean, that, man. <laughs> yeah, especially to fuel your workouts. Um, one big thing that we discovered about me and my digestion is that once I stopped taking birth control, um, it's when my digestion really made a huge improvement, which was bizarre to me. Um, and because the average person doesn't think that birth control would affect your digestion. That's just, it's only supposed to affect the, the female things, you know, not necessarily digestion. Um, so that was a big improvement for me. But you didn't just say, well, your digestion's not good, so you need to get off birth control. You know, <laughs> like, here's all of this information about how it can affect it positively or negatively. Educate yourself. Do what you guys, you know, think is right because you don't want to be responsible for any unwanted babies. <laughs> shout out. Shout out. Shout out, Josiah. <laughs> Just kidding. He's not unwanted. He's very loved, but he was a surprise. <laughs> Not on one. Um, but yeah, so you were so much about educating us about how and why um, it can affect certain things. So I honestly probably learned more from you about birth control and my cycle than I ever have in my whole life. That's just not something that was true education. It was just like, yep, you get your cycle and that's life. And here's some birth control to make it better. So I was on it for 12 years. And I mean, any medication long term is going to do some damage. But I had no idea it's yeah so that that was big for me because we didn't eat a ton of dairy really i mean yeah, we we... string cheese and that's about it <laughs> um because we only drink almond milk for milk and so dairy wasn't yeah. an issue i think a lot of it was just the processed foods the prepackaged uh you know meals yeah we meal prepped but you know the quality of food still i mean mm -hmm. we definitely we choose rice over over doing a potato or a vegetable i mean yeah we would we, i think the, the most vegetables we got is if we had salsa. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do fruit because fruit worked well, but, yeah. you know, we didn't really ever focus on the, the vegetable side. Yeah, rice was always our carb. Yeah. And um, so since you challenged us to incorporate vegetable carbs for those grain carbs or whatever it was, that, I mean, mm. that, that's been huge. I've literally never eaten so many vegetables in my life <laughs> that I have in the last year. And then I, I think it was Stephanie. Somebody might have said, if you don't like to eat vegetables, you're not cooking them the right way, whoever it was. And I was like, oh, mind blowing. <laughs> so then that makes us take, take responsibility you know, for, for how we eat vegetables. So. Yeah, no, I, I think there's so many great takeaways just from like those last few segments there. Like, uh, you know, what one, what Stephanie said, like, yeah, I completely believe in that. I think that, you know, there's so many people that unfortunately, um, you know, as we get closer and closer to here we are 2019, 2020, like, you know, going grocery shopping and cooking in your own house are two things that are not really done all that much. It's actually becoming more of a rarity. Um, I think we're getting farther and farther away from the kitchen. Um, and so, you know, me being a new dad, one of the biggest emphasis and focuses for me going forward is making sure that uh, the kitchen is a place in my house that is like the best room in the whole entire house. Like I, I want to cook. I want to have the music up. Like I want to involve the kids. Like I want them to like, and you know, we'll see what happens, but maybe I'm just all talk here, but uh, you know, it's important. And I think that like, you know, making cooking a, a part of your lifestyle is something that, you know, it's going to make you live a better life. Like it's going to make you feel better. It's going to, it's going to just improve the quality of your life in general. Um, so, you know, I think that, uh, there's some big takeaways for people that are one with the whole birth control conversation, you know, anybody that has questions on that, just 
shoot me a message and like I can share resources and have those conversations. Um, obviously, it can get complex uh, with some of that, but um, the same with the digestive stuff. But I think there's just, you know, it goes to show if we want to simplify the process here, like look at some of the big picture changes. They went from essentially never eating vegetables to crushing the 800 gram challenge like consistently every single day. Uh, shout out EC. Um, and, and they, you know, they, so that was obviously a big piece. They, you know, they improved the food quality. That's the, that's the biggest takeaway. Like the quantity was dialed in. They really improved the food quality. And, um, you know, I think I would probably argue one of the biggest things on the quality side would have been the meat, fish, eggs, uh, and then a the little dairy that you were doing. Cause maybe talk a little bit about that and what that transition looked like in terms of the quality of meats and fishes, especially. Uh, Darren and I were big on eggs. I, I know leading up to working with you, we would go to Walmart and we would buy the 60 count box of eggs. We'd buy two at a time because we would go through them so quickly because eggs were just such a big part of our, uh, of our daily meals. And when we began working with you and you challenged us, hey, go and, and, and go to Whole Foods uh, and try some cage-free eggs, try some of the meat and see what you think. And we went there and we got, and we're like, oh my God, $3 for a dozen eggs? <laughs> we're, we're, we're spending like $7 for 60. Like this, this man's gonna make us go broke. We just bought a house. How, how can we do this? And I remember the first time we came home with them and like cooked eggs, it was, that was life changing. The color was even different. The, you know, everything about the eggs were yeah. different. The way they, they looked when we cracked them, the way that they cooked was different. And then obviously the way that they taste was just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. kind of, we just kind of sat back and go like, why, <laughs> why haven't we been doing this sooner? Yeah. And we, we sat down and we looked at the cost efficiency of it um, with doing those eggs as opposed to the Walmart. And it really just wasn't that big of a difference. The sticker shock, I think initially got us, but yeah. um, once we saw what we were getting out of it and, and what little difference there was, we realized it was all worth it. Yeah. And, um, and same with the beef. Um, you know, we, we go through, I would say probably about three, three and a half pounds of beef a week between us with meal prep alone and uh just everything about it yeah. from the raw form to how it cooks to how it smells to how it tastes i oh, mean yeah. it's it's phenomenal compared to the to the little tube of meat that you go and you you buy at uh any of the major retailers and, yeah. and, and cook up so even the pre-packaged like um sausages and stuff that I have for one of my meals. It's like mm -hmm. a smoked turkey kielbasa from Whole Foods. Um, even that, I mean, although it's packaged, it's still so much fresher than what we would get at Walmart yeah. or Kroger or anything like that. So, And I would say that's really about a, just as big of a change um, with the, the fresh proteins um, is the stuff that we buy that's packaged, that's prepackaged, whether it's, uh, you know, the protein or even... Um, cereal because I, 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 I still need my cereal. We make the better choices yeah. in, in what we buy. And so we try to buy the higher quality. And one thing that you preached is that the, look at the ingredient list. Yeah. There's less is truly more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that came down from when, um, when we first started because we drank energy drinks every single day. Rockstar. Rockstar <laughs> energy drinks. And I still remember just mentally hating you when you're like, try to stop drinking those at least, you know, have maybe three a week. And then you introduced us over to, uh, to Zevia and you're like, look at the ingredient list compared, you know, you've got the sugar free drink that's got an ingredient list that you can't even pronounce yeah. majority of the things in there. And then you have this Zevia energy drink that has four ingredients. Yeah. And so we tried it and at first it was it was a little different but man yeah, you get used to it. yeah you get used to it and now if we have one of the you know name brand energy drinks it yeah. just it doesn't quite taste right and you you can feel a difference even after after drinking it yeah um, like we already didn't like you before we started working with you <laughs> because we knew you would make us stop drinking those <laughs> and some might call that an addiction but whatever uh, and, 
that's just from our law enforcement background is working nights and needing to stay up. Yeah. Hey, let's let's grab a bang energy drink and oh. and not sleep at all. Yeah. Even when we're not working. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. I mean, gosh, I'm sitting here looking at the time and I'm like, mind, talk about mind blown. Like, I, I think of that emoji of mind blown in terms of like how fast time goes when you're doing a podcast. But um, yeah, like, you know, it's crazy to me because if I would have, and, and like, this is the thing that's so mind blowing. If we would have gone to where those chickens were at of the Walmart eggs that yeah. you were buying in that many for that cost, and if y'all would have saw the experience that they are going through, like there's no way in hell y'all would be buying that. But if you went to the other farm and you saw like the, 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 the nice cute little chickens and you know, I just, I love, I love that difference. Uh, you know, like it's just, it's just like, wow, like how would I want to be treated as an animal? And just like us, I mean, if we don't have a good quality of life we're not going to produce a good quality of work whatever product whatever that may be 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. so you know i i think that for as many eggs as y'all are eating switching to the quality on that because i just think it's like what are those items that y'all are consuming so much of right so like the eggs that quality switch because there's such a big consumption the ground beef going to like a grass-fed ground beef like I, I mean, I think that those were some big players as well. You know, when you start talking about like antibiotics and like, um, you know, different things and in, in, in terms of like meat quality, because I think that there's a definitely a, a level of awareness that we haven't reached yet with that. You know, most people think chicken's chicken and beef's beef. But like the reality of it is, is not all chickens created equal, not all beef's created equal, not all salmon's created equal. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not. Definitely. Um. Cool. Okay. So I want to, and again, we might have to bring all on again, because I, I think there's so many good takeaways here, but real quick, let's dive into um, over the next like 10 minutes or so here. Y'all both have worked night shift. Um, there's a bunch of people out there that are police officers, firefighters, nurses, doctors, whatever. Um, give me y'all's biggest like takeaways, lessons, uh, advice that y'all can give out there for those people in the same situation because guys I've been in the field now for almost 10 years and like these are some of the most consistent clients I've ever worked with so listen to this advice going forward uh, probably one of the biggest things is being prepared um, you know if you go into a night shift where you know that no other foods open besides Whataburger and Taco Bell then that's what you're gonna end up eating so if you don't take something, if you don't at least take your lunch and a couple snacks or something like that, then when you're tired and you're stressed and nothing else is open, you are so much more likely to make those bad decisions. I don't want to say bad. You shouldn't feel bad for it, but to make those unhealthier decisions, like going to Whataburger or going to Taco Bell. Um, and if you do go to those, every restaurant now has healthier options of some sort. So you can, I haven't ever had Whataburger salad, but I know they have one, you know? So I'm not sure there's, there's always a better option when you do go there though, you know, and especially quantity wise, you know, not getting something super sized or even the fries or whatever the case may be. Um, I know one benefit we have in the city I work is that there isn't, there are two IHOPs close um, and they're open 24 seven. And you can eat really well if you go to IHOP. You know, they have vegetable options. They have um, eggs and egg whites and different omelets and all that kind of stuff. So there are a lot better choices you can make there. Um, but if you don't go prepared into that night shift, you are so much, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're going to make those bad decisions. And that's, I think that's based on science. There's a lot of research that's done when you're, you know, really low on sleep. I'm, I'm lucky right now in that we don't have kids, so I'm able to sleep during the day. Um, so I don't go tired to work, but if you have to wake up for court in the middle of when you're supposed to be sleeping or you have kids or other, you know, responsibilities, that's unfortunately going to drive you to, to worse decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, I use my lunch break to work out. Um, not only because before, after a 12 hour shift, I don't think it's beneficial to go to the gym. I don't think it's really, if it's diving it, if it's cutting into your sleep, um, either way, then that's not beneficial for you. And then after a 12 hour shift, I don't know how anybody even has the energy to work out. So what do you do? You drink pre-workout or you drink an energy drink to get through it. 
but then that's so close to when you're supposed to be sleeping and you're not going to get a good quality of sleep. The four delay is just a snowball effect. Um, so preparation, um, you know, using your resources when you can, working out on your lunch break if you can. Um, yeah. I, I think she nailed it on the head is preparedness. You know, for me, when I would go to work, I would always, I always bring a couple meals that I know I'm going to need for work and I always bring one or two extra. And one of the normal meals I always bring is a high quality meal. It's got a lot of fruit or a lot of vegetables, you know, the high quality proteins. But then I always have meals set aside that I can eat on the go if I have to, because you don't know if you're going to get stuck on a call, yeah. if you're going to be stuck sitting in the hospital, you know, in a place where you can't leave. And so if I can go in and reach my bag and grab, uh, grab the container of almonds and the RX bar and, and get that down, that is still so much better than going to a fast food place mm -hmm. or, you know, what other options might be available late at night. So yeah. preparedness is key mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i love that i love that well guys i uh like i said i could sit here and probably ask y'all so many questions i'm i'm in shock literally i know we we had a little bit of a late start here but uh i yeah i can't believe it flew by so fast we'll have to get y'all on again i think that there's so many good takeaways on here for those of you that are either watching this or listening to this um so if you didn't take notes when you're going through this then that's okay i understand uh, you just have to restart the episode now and take notes through the whole thing. Um, and then if you have questions, where can everybody find y'all at um, on social media? And that way they can reach out to y'all and ask away. Uh, well, we just started um, our own fitness uh, and wellness kind of page. Uh, a lot of influence from you. Um, hopefully sometime in the future doing some sort of coaching. But anyway, on Instagram and on Facebook, you can find us at Full Nelson Fitness because his last name is Nelson. We're going full Nelson, getting engaged or getting engaged and married. So then we'll be full Nelson. Um, wrestling reference. Yeah. And so uh, at full Nelson fitness on Facebook and Instagram. And then my personal one is the letter D young underscore fit. And then that'll soon be the Nelson underscore fit. Um. <laughs> and then my uh, Instagram is uh, Eric with a K D dot Nelson. Yeah. So it's, pretty much my full name yeah so. and we are always open to helping anybody out we post a lot of workout videos on our fitness page and some of the food quality stuff that we've learned and that we have implemented and then um, on our personal pages we always want to be able to help people so wherever they feel comfortable reaching out to us um, we're pretty quick with responses unless we're sleeping during the day <laughs> so um, we just love to help that's that's yeah. really the ultimate foundation. I think that's why we do what we do why we post what we post is to motivate people and we know a lot of the times the people that we're motivating never reach out to us but when we do have the one or two people reach out and say hey i love what you're doing or hey you guys have really helped me mm -hmm. um that's what makes it worth worth it and so just knowing that we're helping people um it makes me want to get up and keep doing it every day yeah 100 percent. i love it it's the most fulfilling thing in the world I've, uh, I've dedicated my life to it the past nine, 10 years, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think that uh, helping people, you know, people ask me all the time, they're like, I don't know how to find like my why, my purpose. I'm like, figure out something that you like doing that can help other people. Yeah. And that's it. Like, that's the answer. So um, guys, I'm so proud of y'all, not only on your nutritional achievements, but you know, really paying it forward and like helping others. Um, I, y'all have a YouTube channel as well, right? Is that called, what is that called? Full Nelson, Fitness. Yeah. Full Nelson Fitness. Got it. Got it. Well, that's awesome. Well guys, go check these guys out. Um, they were phenomenal clients to work with and have been great friends and it's just cool to see everything that y'all are doing now. And, um, yeah, other than that, thank you so much for taking the time, Dara and Eric and, uh, yeah, y'all enjoy this weather today. Happy <laughs> well. Yeah, you too. <laughs>